If you Google top common cyber attacks, you'll find different examples such as distributed denial of service, insider threats, supply chain, commodity malware, and many more. Cybersecurity attacks can be very complex processes and operations carried out, but sometimes we tend to overlook the details, and I think we forget that some of the most seemingly effective means of breaching a computer, an individual, a target, uh, are often very easy. And so what we were trying to say here is you have to channel your inner script kitty sometimes. So. In today's video, I will be crafting and analyzing three common types of cyber attacks and showing you how you can jumpstart an investigation or just protect yourself with a free Google Chrome plugin called Square X. It's completely free and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So anyway, let's get into crafting these three types of common attacks. We all know what the basic premise of a phishing email is by now. Basically gather access in any means possible via passwords, man in the middle attacks, and many more. So in this scenario, what I've done is I've downloaded and configured a basic phishing kit called Zfisher uh, to create a phishing website link. From here, I could embed this into an email, maybe into a website if I really wanted to. But let's go ahead and pivot over to my environment and show you how I'm doing this just on a free EC2 instance on Amazon. Zfisher is a very beginner-friendly phishing toolkit. Here on GitHub, as you can see, it's uh, open source. All you need to do is clone or download this repo. Uh, as you can see, I'm on my AWS Cloud Council. I have a basic EC2 instance provisioned. I have downloaded or cloned the repo, and here is the zfisher bash script. So simply doing sudo bash zfisher.sh, we're going to be provisioned with this wizard. And zfisher comes with 35 uh, templates at uh, the time of the recording for popular services. Uh, I tested a few of these and they are pretty legitimate looking. They're not outdated, which is quite nice. And this wizard is pretty straightforward. So as my running example for today's video, we're going to be using Pinterest. Uh, so typing in 12, there are three different ways that you can host this phishing impersonation site. Localhost, which is something you would probably want to do if you wanted to make it look legitimate, you would have to provision your own domain, or you can use Cloudflare Tunnels or Local Expos. Uh, Cloudflare Tunnels is a really cool. It dynamically hosts and set up a URL for you. So that is what I'm going to be doing for today's video. Simply choosing two. I don't really want a custom port forwarding. It's going to launch the Cloudflare the service in the background. It's all going to do this for you. All right, so a unique URL will be generated here, highlighted in green. This can be embedded into an email or a website, whatever you want to do. Um, so unfortunately, you must leave this Zfisher program up and running to keep the Cloudflare uh, tunnel for hosting this phishing website. and. Another stipulation is that this URL does not look very convincing, but it is a demo environment. So if we just go ahead and uh, find and look at this, it's a very innocent looking web page uh, besides the URL. Okay, so up on my demo email, the complete keylogger project at gmail.com. If you know, you know, I used this way back in the day for a keylogger. Um, so if I were to receive this email and because I'm lazy, I'm just sending it to myself. Uh, and let's say you needed to reset the password for Pinterest because of some security control going on. Uh, I mean, you can basically click it and obviously you would go through here. All right, so dbu.gmail.com. It's going to redirect back into the actual Pinterest. So going back into the AWS Cloud Council, as you can see, I have my Gmail as well as the password captured. And like I said, you have to keep Zfisher up and running as well as the IP address, which has been blurred out. So if you're a security analyst, maybe a professional, or you are a user on your personal account, and maybe you suspect that this is a phishing sample that your team or you have just gotten, um, one way that you can kind of investigate this instead of provisioning up a virtual machine uh, or a container is to use a plugin called Square X. And what Square X will do is develop or create an isolated sandbox environment for you. So it's on or available on the Google Chrome store and Chromium browsers. Uh, so I've already downloaded it. It's literally as simple as just 
installing it and creating an account. Clicking over to the SquareX plugin here, we can see that there are a few options which we will be overviewing in today's video. The first one being the disposable browser. So we can go out and create a disposable environment or sandbox environment in any of these regions. So I'm just going to be choosing US East and we can start this up in a disposable sandbox environment will start up for us. So here I am in the sandbox with its own instance of Chrome up and running. And from here, I could, let's just say, copy this link and uh, you could paste it into this environment. And obviously you could tell that this is a phishing URL. Uh, so you would not want to enter in your email or password. Another unique feature about SquareX is instead of having to copy and paste that phishing email link as I did before, you can actually just do this integrated within the plugin. So you can right click go to the Square X and open a new isolated browser. You don't even have to copy and paste that. And as you can see, of course, this is a phishing link. So pretty cool feature. So within a safe, secure environment, you determine that this is a phishing email. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then you can simply go ahead and dispose of the browser or keep it up. It's up to you. Okay, so a phishing email is pretty basic. Let's go a step forward and actually get into malicious attachments. Another part of phishing or spam email, or even just trying to download some sort of obscure software package is, well, attachments, malicious attachments. Often low level attackers will distribute these malicious files via attachments on emails in various different ways. And typically they're uh, reused, they're commodity attachments. They're trying to send their blast radius out there. So using the phishing email as a means of distributing these malicious files, we won't actually be writing any malicious files in today's video. Uh, there are lots of resources out there to look at, but we are going to be investigating some uh, macros that I wrote myself. So here, once again, I have a phishing email. And uh, as you can tell, I have two types of attachments. One thing to note is that macro enabled Excel and Word documents are becoming more of an obsolete way of trying to trick victims into launching or executing a second stage payload. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that attachments and emails are going away. Attackers have pivoted away from Excel due to the mark of the web, which Microsoft introduced a few years ago, but they're still distributing PDF files, ISO, VDMK. There's a lot of different formats. I'm using a macro enabled Excel file as just a means of demoing. So again, there's two files in this this particular setting. And as an analyst, or again, as a just a general consumer, what you can do is instead of provisioning up a virtual machine, or I don't know, maybe seeing if this is legitimate or not, um, you can go over to Square X. There's this really cool feature. It's called Disposable File Viewer. You can start this thing up. And from here, you can actually go and uh, test a certain file. Let's just say we want to download the employee doc. We'll download that to our host system. We won't execute it. We'll just upload it here. And from here, we can see what's going on in the background. So it doesn't look like anything happened. Maybe there isn't a macro enabled in here. Well, I do know that there actually is a macro. So within a isolated sandbox, you can investigate these files and you don't have to worry about spinning up as some sort of virtual machine or in, if you're a consumer, you can just do this very easily. Instead of having to download the malicious file onto your host system, Square X comes with an integrated view where you can right click, go to Square X again and open the file viewer. This will open the isolated file viewer and you don't even have to download the file. And there's another cool little feature. Uh, if you go over to the Square X plugin you can go to the settings from here, download interceptor can be turned on. And what this will do is it will upload all files that you download from the internet onto this isolated sandbox first. Uh, it just gives you an extra layer of protection. Okay, so we're going to investigate the other one, which is called test macro. It is a simple dialog box that pops up upon launching. Uh, but before we do that, if we go to square X again, and we go to smart integrations, 
there's this new feature that they just recently released. You can turn all three of these on. And basically, it's for Gmail at this time. Um, what it will do is it will scan the documents uh, for you and let you know whether it's a malicious document or not. So both of these are malicious document, probably because they have macros enabled by default. You can actually click the malicious documents and Square X will flag this and say, hey, this is potentially malicious. You should probably look at the file viewer. Uh, so we can look at the open file viewer. But what's really cool is that it'll actually show you what's going on underneath. So these are some of the commands or the VBA scripts in the macro. Uh, and that's pretty cool that it just kind of gives you a rundown of what's going on. So again, you can open up this in file viewer, or you can even clean up the file if you want to by clicking clean the file and you can download as PDF. So here on my test macro, you can see that I have the auto open, and this is going to open that dialogue message box. Uh, and again, open in file viewer and boom, you are ready to go. So there's some really unique, cool features just really integrated into this plugin within a matter of moments. What I'm gonna do here is actually uh, go through and you can see that there's a few new options. You can download it as a PDF, open it in Office 365, but I wanna view this safely with Square X. So I'm just going to click that button and boom, we are up and running. If we go to plugins and then we go to macros, you're going to see that this uh, VBA script is embedded within the macro. Uh, it's dibuda, you know what it is. That is exactly why we use something like an isolated sandbox and it's pretty easy. Okay, so on to my next investigation, which is actually going out and uh, finding a malicious software document that we can investigate and see what's going on underneath. Um, so malicious malvertising. Malicious binaries in commodity malware are often embedded in seemingly innocent looking program files. Maybe you're trying to get a free version of a software uh, and or it's just a software that is not no longer updated. Uh, consumers who maybe aren't as tech savvy will see these as legitimate programs and oftentimes you can be scammed or tricked. So let's say you're trying to download some sort of obscure outdated, unsupported program. I provisioned a new disposable browser and navigated to this website where I'm trying to investigate if I can download Microsoft Direct X 11. Uh, now, most of us will probably not fall for the download button here. I did, real story, have to actually help my grandpa and log in and not install this. So hopefully you're not tricked, but sometimes they get you. But anyway, so here, if we can see uh, the download button is here and, uh, you know, let's just freely download this. It's, uh, you know, totally legitimate. So clicking the download button here, Square X is actually going to go out and provision a new file viewer. And from here, we can see that obviously this is some dumb files, uh, specifically a PowerPoint in WMA file. Wow, what a legitimate, obscure form of software. And we can actually even go and look at this uh, PowerPoint from 2010, which talks about Microsoft DirectX 11. Um, so uh, once again, as a cybersecurity analyst or even just as a consumer, you can confirm whether these files are legitimate or not. Um, and it's just another way to augment and help you in your investigation activities. And it's literally like this simple, uh, it, it's pretty cool. All right, so hopefully you've learned something new about cyber attacks. Oftentimes it's the easiest new ways that provide the most effective means for getting in. Uh, I'm reminded oftentimes by cybersecurity news that you have to be aware of even the simple things. And uh, as a first line of defense, or as an investigation tool, a protection tool, uh, such as Square X, you can find this and easily investigate in an isolated sandbox out on your browser. So I do appreciate Square X for sponsoring today's video. Videos like these help out the channel and continue to help me as an individual content creator. Uh, so check out Square X in the description below. And until the next time, well, yeah, you know what it is. Have a good day.